water bottles from Stephen's Ed, so we have a couple things going on. Oh, okay. No, I just didn't know if I'm missing them. Thank you. Uh, school. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. A couple of things, and I have projected for you guys. Um, one of the main questions that I get all the time is, what is this RTI thing that you talk about all the time? What is response to intervention? So I have some handouts for you there, and I just wanted to talk about it briefly, because um, I reference it at, at all of our board meetings. Um, basically, response to intervention is a research-based strategy in which you look at education in three tiers. Um, the first tier is what happens between the teacher and their classroom teacher, where there's differentiation, whether students are, they need remediation or they need acceleration. The second tier is where students need extra support, and that could be a teacher pushing into the classroom or a teacher pulling students out. Next year, we're gonna have a district reading specialist who's gonna help all of our struggling readers. We're gonna have math wet. And then the third level is where you have special education. Um, the idea being that with response to intervention, you reach at-risk students before things become a problem, you target algebra one, and you have dropout potential. So one of the first things that we did when I came on board was to implement our response to intervention program. It is working, and right now we're looking at having a high school graduation rate above 90%. Um, we're keeping our kids here, we're not sending them out, we're working them through the portfolio system using all those different interventions. And then going forward, the second slide here, is how we're gonna screen all of our kids. Um, and our threshold being that much more, um, you guys have the handout there, I just have this here before. Um, our threshold being that much more stringent where we put the interventions in place to make sure kids are on track and they're making adequate academic progress. Another component of RTI is how we handle discipline. Most of us probably went to school in the system of zero tolerance. You do something, no one really asks you questions, you're out for suspension and you get dependent. What we're seeing is when students are struggling academically and then they make a poor decision and then we suspend them, well then you have a kid who's struggling academically, sitting at home, suspended, falling behind. So we're gonna do things a little differently with that. Um, we're gonna use restorative justice where kids, they still have a penalty when they make a bad decision, but it's here in school and we work through it. There's counseling about how not to make those bad decisions, but we keep them making academic progress. Um, so that's where we're going. So people asked for some explanation on that, and I was happy to provide that. So you guys have Im some images there and some handouts. Um, I'm very happy to report that we had 120 AP exams administered, which is a tremendous amount when you consider the number of students we have. We had a fantastic academic award ceremony at the Sheridan. It was really, really good. We went to the County Academic Achievement Dinner where Joey Tejada, our valedictorian, was selected to be the speaker for all the valedictorians in the county, and he brought the house down at the end. He did such a good job. Everyone was so proud. Um, it was just a great moment for all of us. Tomorrow, Google is coming to Theodore Roosevelt. Um, Mr. Stratton knows full well the Google Expeditions Pioneer Program is coming. Google Expeditions is the virtual reality viewer program that they have. Um, we went to school, and when someone told me about the Amazon, I looked at a static picture in a textbook. Now our kids are going to be taking virtual field trips led by their instructors where they can go all over the globe. It's really, really cool and we have that going on tomorrow. Other things that we have going on, um, our number one professional development goals, our curriculum mapping initiative, and our ESL teachers are actually gonna be starting that next week. Um, some of them had a meeting yesterday about it. We formed a partnership with Stevens, um, in which Stevens is gonna be pushing in and doing professional development for all of our science and math teachers. We are gonna be designated as Stevens School, so we have the engineering and elementary program at Daniel Webster School. Um, they're going to be doing uh, coding and uh, elementary, um, sorry, engineering design principles at TRS, and then they're going to be helping with our robot robotics program at, at the high school. So we're very excited about that. We're still mapping all that out. The other thing that we've arranged is um, we're actually going to be taking on student teachers. So we have uh, memories of understandings with St. Peter's and NJCU, um, and people want to come here because they know what a great teaching staff we have. We're, we're, we're ranked really high. Um, I think that's a big uh, tribute to the district. Some other things, our 6AT program won the academic bowl yesterday, um, which is big news. We beat everyone else in the county, and a lot of teachers contributed to that, and that's a big honor. Our food services program, um, basically KUKA, right? Um, we were just recognized as having the number 11 food services program in the state by niche.com because everything gets ranked now. Um, but we all know how amazing KUKA is. Um, all of our food is fantastic, and so that's really, really nice for us. Um, last week, uh, Daniel Webster had an art show that was absolutely phenomenal. 
Um, it was well attended. It was great to see the kids and have them talk to me about their artworks and what they were working on. Um, and that was really, really cool. We had our two spring concerts at um, Daniel Webster and at Theodore Roosevelt School. And this Thursday, we have our all district concert. So that's really great for us to be able to perform. A couple of the things that are going on. Last meeting, you know, there was a lot of news about principals moving, right? Um, so all the principals, we have transition plans, um, in which you're looking at the academic performances of the district, um, I mean, each school, the various needs, meeting with the faculty. So we've already started to put in place those various transition plans. With that, um, with Ms. Radowski taking over a principal position, there is an open supervisor position. And we have recruited for that, and we are conducting the interviews starting next week. Um, we had over 40 applicants for that position, um, which shows you people want to work here and we off because they know we have lots of good things going on. Um, I'm continuing to execute my entry plan, and one of those areas that I'm very happy with is the Student Advisory Committee. Um, and we will be meeting um, once a month, and we have some representatives of the Student Advisory Committee here. If you guys can stand and be recognized, and we are a student-centered organization, and the key to that is student voice. So I'll be meeting with them regularly. Each of the principals will also have a student advisory committee, and from time to time they will come and report to the board about some of the things that we have going on. Did you guys want to say anything real quick about um, how our meeting went? Um, good evening, Dr. Ruby, President Barca, and people with trustees. Um, I'm proud to be a member of the Student Advisory Committee. We talked about the future of our school, our input on what's going on now, and what else we hope to see in terms of administration and our own involvement. Um, the members are President Chris Devaney, um, Treasurer Daniel Sanchez, um, not here right now, Secretary Samantha Chong, and I'm the Vice President um, Grace. <laughs> uh, we also have input from seniors who are leaving on what they would like to see um, as sort of a legacy. And it offers a chance to talk about different points of view uh, in front of the administration with an equal chance to speak. So we appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Ms. Chris. Thank you for everything. And that's all I got for this meeting. Oh, one, oh, sorry. I did forget one last thing. The last days of school. So um, there was a clerical error from June 2015. Um, that we just discovered, uh, power school is wrong. So this means that the dates I sent out a couple of weeks ago at the last days of school, I'm sorry, we are short one day. So the last days of school um, for Daniel Webster and Theodore Roosevelt will be June 22nd, but the 20th, 21st, and 22nd of June will all be um, one session days for faculty and staff. However, we will provide aftercare um, the way that we're doing on the 27th for parents. The last day of school for the high school will be June 23rd. Graduation is still the 22nd. Um, so it means the kids have traditionally come in to get their report cards, so they will come in the next day to get their report cards and their diplomas. Um, so we are just moving one more day. So I just wanted to make everyone that there's an email going out to the staff about it tonight. Um, I did consult the association president yesterday when, as soon as I found out about it, let her know. Um, and of course, let the board president know. But that is one adjustment there. Thank you, Dr. Richard. Uh, motion to accept Dr. Wiki's report. Okay. Thank you. And I'm, I'm glad that the students are being here. I'm glad that we're uh, all like that. And uh, congratulations to Cook. You know, it's great to be rated high. The only thing for us is uh, now Cook is going to want to raise. But she does a great job. She really does. Okay. Uh, uh, All in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye. 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 Yes. Uh, yes, Mr. Morris, I have uh, included in the board packet. In consultation with the uh, superintendent, we have revised the, uh, or proposing to revise the student use of high schools. Okay, uh, just for the record, the, the township uh, project, they received the policy last week. And they just feel that, they, that there was a need for to be identified in, the, in, in a policy, the police department or the, or the township. So uh, as far as the bike, I mean, the whole thing with the bike is to put a rack, a bike rack <laughs> in Roosevelt School. And I just think it became just so, and, you know, I mean, I said right from the beginning, uh, so the town didn't feel like they needed to be uh, indemnified in it. So essentially, I'm going to throw out all the, permission slip that we got, but there will be a permission slip given to the parents 
just to let them know that uh, that the board will not be responsible for any bicycles that are lost, stolen, or damaged, you know, on the racks or whatever. Happened. But uh, so there's a new policy, essentially. Uh, and since I don't have my glasses, uh, I can read it. But uh, it's, it's the agenda for the, Okay, so like I said, it's a it's a paragraph uh, again. Said from the beginning, I'm just going to have to just walk into all this stuff. It's it's to put a bike rack. <laughs> and Billy's there, but Billy knows he's just. Uh, I said like I, I just don't get it. But anyway, so so that's that uh, policy will be amended. I have a question about that. Sure. So if you if you waive this right, is your child still allowed to ride to school, or is the I mean, school saying you, your child can't well, ride they, to school? Any, any child can ride to school. Yeah. It's just if they're going to park, if they're going to put their bike in the rack. Yes. We just the, the school does not want to be the school board does not want to be responsible if someone breaks the lock and steals the sure. bike or anything else. Essentially, that's that's pretty much the policy. Okay, so if they're injured while riding to school, the town is not responsible for any accidents. I mean, every, every child could drive. You know, I rode my bike. You yes. know, so, you know, and uh, yeah, any child, you know, that's up to the parents. That's okay. up to the school system to decide which child is, could ride his bike to school. You know, okay. we're not that. Uh, right. <laughs> okay. Okay, we don't want to be that extreme. So, well, like I said, essentially the policy has been amended. Uh, you know, the, you know, the, the parents are going to be responsible for their child to to, to ride their bike to the school, and uh, the board is not going to be responsible for any damage to the bike while it's hooked up to the. Okay. Okay, to the bike. Thank okay, so that being said, uh, is that it for our attorney's report? That's correct. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Move to accept uh, attorney's report. Move. Okay. Uh, we have a request for a consent agenda. Motion to.
I just correct him on that? On uh, the last one, it said there's no second team. Mark and Tyler. There's no second team. So, um, Superintendent Zwicky, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, a friend of, a colleague of ours um, said that he spoke to you about the um, music program. And um, we just wanted to know if this is to do with TRS, Theodore Roosevelt School, the music program there. And we're wondering, per a conversation with Mrs. Donna Hockhauser, if there's going to be a, um, a chorale or chorale program, a music program starting there. And if so, can you tell us about that? So, yes, one of the things, I'm, I was actually waiting until the Wall District concert on Thursday oh, to announce. Oh, oh did I preempt you? I'm it's sorry. Okay. I feel like um, Hillary Clinton. So, I'm very happy to announce that we're going to have um, an instrumental music program at Theodore Roosevelt School, um, as well as the great work that uh, Ms. Hockhauser is doing. Um, Mrs. Hockhauser will continue with the, um, the bell choir and doing choral music at TRS as well as come up to the high school. We don't have choral music right now at the high school. So she's going to work in both buildings so we can have choral music at the high school um, as well as um, we're hiring um, an instrumental music teacher um, to hopefully do violin and some of those other instruments um, starting when students enter. Um, that's, a, that's something that we don't have now. So we're committed to expanding the arts. Um, so this way, students have, have both those classes. And that will be open to all students, and that will fit to all students' schedules. So it's not something where it's going to be just for one program or one track of students. All students will have um, access to both of those oh, that's programs. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. I have one more question. Sure. Okay. Um, you had a private conversation recently with someone, um, Steve Ramsher, and he mentioned, um, he said that he supports so are you support involving Weehawken High School students in recording the township public meetings as part of their required community service? Mm 
No, I think that's taken slightly out of context. Okay. It was the question about us having expanding kid network news. Okay. Um, and I said that we're looking to make that a course again um, and actually to possibly get Perkins funding from that. Separate to that, we had a conversation how in my last district um, I had put in a civics course, yes. um, which was a required course. And one component of that course was that students would go to, to local meetings. Um, they would interact. They could do internships in local government, things like that. had a capstone experience. Basically, yeah. it, was a, it was a citizenship boot camp course. Yeah. Um, so that's what we were discussing. Uh, OK. I just wanted to put those questions there. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? a lot of improvement in the, in the arts arena I mean, uh, uh, with theater and music and everything else. And what about in the fine arts um, area? Is there any, have there been any movements changes? So we, we have a fantastic staff already. Um, one of the things we're looking to do is to, through project-based learning, looking where students can use more multimedia displays, using things like coding, um, and, and to have more of that authentic project-based experience to do more of the arts in their regular class, that it's not something that's completely separate from that, um, to do that professional development. We also have great relationships with, um, with outside agencies, but one of the components of the STEAM program is the A, the aesthetics and the art piece of that. So that's going to be integrated into the STEAM program. So there would be any like classes teaching Photoshop, Illustrator, graphic design, that sort of? So we're actually at the high school, we're expanding with AP Art History and AP Studio Art, um, and through our computer science program, our AP computer science program and our regular computer science program, they will be exposed to all that as well. Um, so that's going to be starting in seventh grade and going straight through the high school. Um, kind of the, the basics leading up to that is how we're putting in the code program um, at Theodore Roosevelt School, and that, that builds up to doing that at the high school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was wondering for the arts ed program, um, how much of it is dedicated to the social and emotional well-being of the children outside the program? So that's a big component of that. Um, and it's one of the things that we're doing with the reorganization of high school of having a house system um, in which we have one administrator who's going to be the point person for grades 7 through 9, as well as one who's going to be the uh, point administrator for 10 through 12. So one that's that they're the emotional support. The other thing, too, is that the guidance counselors are being allocated one for each house. Um, and we've also contracted with Sage Day, who will also be providing behavioral support um, for all students and kind of behavioral counseling and things like that as well. So um, that's something that we have going on. I do all of that stuff too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Don't ever. laughs> Anyone else like to address the board? Any questions? The doctors are looking at you. Okay. Hearing none, motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you. Okay. Thank you everyone for coming. <laughs>